Hey, what's up guys? It's Lucas and you're watching Fine Tuning. Alright, so it's cautiously optimistic new guitar day. Um, you may have watched, uh, I did a kind of a review and demo of the Epiphone Les Paul standard 50s, um, which of course, is you, if you watch the video, you know that I had some fret problems with, um, but otherwise I thought it was a really cool guitar. And I wanted to give Epiphone a fair shake, because as many of you have pointed out, and I agree, when you make that many guitars, uh, sometimes a bad one slips through. So I wanted to give them another chance. So uh, I went ahead and bought another Epiphone from the 2020 line, um, the Explorer, the 2020 Epiphone Explorer in black or ebony. We're going to do an unboxing. I'm gonna give you my kind of first impressions. We're gonna see if there's anything weird about it to start with and whether or not I'm gonna to need to send it back. Hopefully not, really, really hope not. I've got my handy dandy tone knife here and we're going to unbox it and see what happens. So let's get to it. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you, that was kind of a pain in the butt to get out of that box. <laughs> I really am cautiously optimistic because I really want this to be awesome. <laughs> I really, really do. So as you can see here, it's a good packing job. Yeah. Got our little uh, headstock buffer thing. Here we go. Before we get to the guitar itself, here is the kind of bag of stuff that you get with it. Um, once again, guaranteed instrument here. Number has not been filled out on this tag. That worries me a little bit. I'm not gonna lie to you. That Epiphone was given to the Les Paul was that way too. Sure, you can see. Where there's that little space there. The number has not been filled out. So, for me, that just means that, well, like, what's the point in this? <laughs> All right, so here we go. As you can see, it comes in this nice kind of, this is an interesting kind of bag thing that they put it in because usually the bags that these kind of guitars come in are like a different, I don't know, material, kind of a, this is actually a little nicer, I think. Here we go. The Epiphone Explorer 2020. So first off, it's relatively light. You know, lighter than the Les Paul that I got. I'm gonna say this is probably, you know, eight pounds, eight and a half pounds. It's a, it's a solid pound lighter than the Les Paul. Paint lines look really clean, actually, on the, where the fingerboard meets the neck. I mean, I, I mean, that's a good, like, good paint line. There's no bleed. Like, it's really straight. Not that that actually makes a difference. It's the, it's the, the idea of attention to detail that comes with it that I really appreciate. The nut looks good. Headstock looks good. I really like the way that they've gone with this new kind of more Gibson-esque Epiphone logo. And, of course, uh, the Explorer is not as big a change because they've been doing the Gibson Explorer headstock on Epiphone Explorers for a very long time. Um, you know, the kind of three-on-three uh, -three headstocks are the ones that have had some change, like the Les Pauls and SGs and stuff like that. Not the V or the Explorer, though. They've pretty much always been the same. But they have changed the font, so it does look like the Gibson font now. And it looks like, uh, you know, inlaid kind of abalone, mother of pearl type something. So it looks really nice. It has uh, Grover tuners on the back, which is very cool. Love me some Grovers. These are, of course, the mini Grovers. Um, one notable difference, generally Explorers, Gibson Explorers, have the strap button on the back, right here, and not right here. And what that tends to do is prevent neck dive. Um, so I don't know if this will have neck dive or not. We'll put a strap on and, and try it, but okay. 
So far, so good. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna put a little clip-on tuner on the headstock. And we're gonna tune it up to pitch. Well, right out of the gate, I can tell you this guitar is very resonant. Um, I think more resonant than the Les Paul, actually. Like, that's loud. I'm gonna check the nut height here. And basically all I'm doing is just kind of, I'm gonna hold down the string about the third fret and then kind of press down the string behind that. And that just kind of will show me how much space is between the uh, first fret and the string. And that kind of just kind of, you know, tells me how the nut height is. A little, little on the high side, I think, especially on the low strings, but that's fine. I would much, much rather it be on the high side because then you can always cut it down if you need it to. This neck is just, completely straight there is zero relief in this neck at all <laughs> so if it has fret buzz at this point it wouldn't surprise me a little bit because that's that's so straight that's not on anybody that like wood moves when you ship stuff so but let's just check it and see how it is and then um, I'll adjust the relief a little bit too but a little bit A little bit right there, but again, there's no relief in the neck. Okay, so that's good. That's really good to start because I only noticed a little bit of buzz right here. And as I said, this neck is 100% straight, like there's zero relief in it. So it's not unusual for there to be a little bit of uh, buzz on these kind of first sort of four or five frets if the neck is that straight because it's really hard to get, you know, there'd be no buzz with no okay. relief in the neck. So, so um, that's I'm going to pop the truss rod that's cover That's really off. good to start because and I only noticed a little, a little bit of buzz bit right here. in the neck. By the way, um, if you don't know what neck relief is, um, all I'm doing or all I'm talking about is how much kind of bend or bow that the neck has in it as far as coming forward or backwards or being straight. So neck relief tends to refer to the neck being kind of bowed a little bit. That might sound bad, but that's a good thing. You want there to be a little bit of relief. If it's too straight, then you're probably gonna get fret buzz because you don't have room for the strings to do their ellipsis. So you need a little bit of relief in almost every guitar. Only the, the craziest, most perfect fret jobs can you get the neck like completely straight and get away with it. Like the Eastmans are like that, but I would not expect that on almost any guitar. Allen key. So to put some relief in the neck, what we're gonna do is put the Allen key in and we're gonna turn towards the treble side. If I wanted to straighten the neck, I would put it in and turn it towards the bass side. So the kind of, you know, easy way to check the relief is to hold down one of the strings. I usually use the low string on the first fret with your first finger and use like your pinky or something to hold down the, you know, around the 14th fret with your pinky finger and then kind of like tap the string right here in between somewhere. And what you're looking for is just a little bit of bounce. So right now this string is still completely lay on the fret. So that tells me that the neck has still got no relief in it. Let's check those kind of first like four frets again. Good. Awesome. That's pretty much gotten rid of the buzz entirely. Honestly, that's pretty good. Um, you know, I'll tweak it a little, little bit more kind of as I play it some and like, you know, you sort of fine tune the guitar. Each guitar is a little different. Some guitars seem to like to have a little lower action or a little higher action depending on how they sound or what they feel like. Um, this has got that surprisingly nice kind of like slim tapery sort of neck, but it doesn't feel like too flat. Sometimes I think the slim taper necks feel too flat, but this doesn't really feel that way. So it is thinner than the 50s one, but not, not a ton thinner. And it has a similar kind of profile. So that's good. I'm going to kind of play with the guitar a little bit and sort of, you know, nail down the setup just to get it just the
the way that I would like it for this particular guitar. But so far, I have nothing negative to say, um, which is great. That's awesome. I want to have nothing negative to say. So, <laughs> um, that's fantastic. So uh, the next step is going to be for me to um, kind of clean up this sort of boxy mess here and get this thing plugged in and kind of check out the electronics and see what it sounds like and give it kind of an initial test playthrough. Um, I can tell for sure that I'm going to need to oil the fingerboard because it looks, looks kind of dry. Um, but again, that's a pretty normal type thing. Um, especially when you're talking about a guitar that's built in China and is shipped all the way around the world to me here on the east coast of the United States. So, you know, not unusual there. That's not a big deal. All right, well, I'm going to cut now so that I can uh, clean up and get this thing plugged in and check it out. So there you go, that's the first look at the Epiphone 2020 Explorer. Um, I have to say I am extremely impressed thus far with this one, um, far and above as far as, you know, in relation to the gold top that I reviewed. Um, that's a great guitar too, it just had, you know, inherent fret problems, that was a real bummer. But this doesn't seem to have any of those issues, and it sounds great, and it feels really good to play. Um, I, uh, I did try the strap thing um, with the strap here, and it, you know, I mean, it doesn't neck dive, you know, so that, I mean, that, that's cool. Um, I'm still going to move it to the normal Explorer position because I just kind of prefer the way that feels personally. Because um, this is kind of a long guitar anyway, so like when you have it, it kind of makes the neck stick out here, whereas if you put it on the back, it kind of moves it back some. But other than that, I mean, this is a really, really cool guitar, and I think this is what Epiphone should be doing. So, you know, assuming that maybe I just got a bad one with the other one, uh, this is great. So I would give this a really high score. So. Anyway, I'm going to have a full demo review of this guitar later after I've like, you know, taken the time to really fine tune, fine tune, uh, set it up and, you know, oil the fingerboard and cut the nut slots just right and all that good stuff. But this is, 
you know, totally usable, playable right out of the box. It just needed a little bit of tweaking. Um, but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and stay tuned for the full demo review. And until next time, I will catch you later. <laughs>